I am a full-time teacher. I teach engineering and uh, science um, all day long, and then when I get done with that, I go and I do after-school programs through my business kaleidoscope enrichment, and then all weekend I do crazy camps and activities and events at the library and museums, um, because I really do wake up every day looking forward to learning something new from the kids I work with. Um, and I am a Maker Camp fanatic. I really am. I came to Maker Fair um, with Let's Make Robots. Andrew Taranova, a friend of mine who writes for Make, invited me one year. And he said, you gotta check this thing out. It's very cool. Come and make some robots with me. And I said, I have no idea how to make a robot. And he said, you're gonna learn. And then you're gonna make a whole lot of them. And I did. And coming to Maker Fair was so inspiring, I started asking immediately, how can I bring this to my tiny little rural New Jersey town? How can I give this to kids that can't come to New York? And when I heard about Maker Camp, I knew I'd found that. So I was one of the earliest um, Maker Camp affiliates. Um, I have been a super affiliate since 2012. Um, and I host Maker Camps for hundreds of kids uh, every year, um, starting in June sometimes a little bit earlier, and right up until August when I go camping in the woods with no Wi-Fi or cell phone signal for a week because you really need to do that. <laughs> yes. Um, so I am deeply, passionately in love with Maker Camp and what it gives to kids and what I get from it too. Because that's one thing that's so important. It's not just about the kids. I mean, it's wonderful to be about the kids, but it has to be about you as a maker as well. It has to feed your passion and your love for what you do just as much as it feeds the kids. Um, so that would be tip number one for those playing along at home. Um, so how many of you have you know, been involved with a maker camp before? Okay. Um, how many of you are thinking of trying maker camp this summer? How many of you are just kind of make your camp curious? <laughs> All, right. All right, let's go. So let's let's talk briefly. What is Maker Camp? The official tagline is: It is a summer camp for uh, makers of all ages um, who love DIY, creating, crafting, hacking, tinkering, and learning. Now, a lot of times when we think maker anything, we tend to think tech. We tend to think um, high budget. 3D printers, and all kinds of things like that, okay? And that stuff is super fun. I love 3D printing cookie cutters and, and having kids come up with sugar cookie recipes. It's a great way to spend an afternoon. But we have to stop thinking that somehow only a robotics expert can run a maker camp. We have to stop thinking that somehow you have to be like a master's degree, PhD educator to run a maker camp. We have to stop thinking that that's only something for schools or libraries or really cool maker spaces, okay? Anyone can run a maker camp. Anyone can be a maker camp affiliate. Um, and that's important because we need to let kids know that anyone can be a maker. We are all makers. Okay, so if you're a mom that just wants to do something really awesome, you can do this. All right? You can do this. You're a homeschooler and you want the learning to continue all summer long. Go for it. Um, you know, you don't have to be a certain type of person. If you are a fiber, fiber artist, okay, and you just love wool and alpaca, um, you can translate that into a really, really meaningful maker camp. All right? It doesn't have to be about fancy technology and fancy degrees or know-how. You don't have to know how to run a maker camp. You can discover how to run a maker camp. Okay? So, does that make you feel a little bit more safe to consider a maker camp for this year? Yeah? Okay? Start small. Start small. If, it, if you can do one whole day at your home showing kids the things that you love to make and letting them explore that, that's a maker camp. That counts, okay? Get out there and share what you're doing because you're going to inspire others and you're going to inspire those kids. Okay, so that's that's tip number two. You can do this. You absolutely, every single person sitting here, if they want to do it, can do it. Okay? Oh look, my 10,000 steps. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, that brings me to the, my next point. I mentioned you don't have to be in a school or a library. Now, I do maker camps in schools. I do maker camps in libraries, um, several of them in fact. I do maker camps with uh, museum programs and, and all kinds of stuff. But you know what I also do? These kids are at the local pool. 
and I run a program I call Science and Swimming. It's one of my Maker Camp initiatives. So I go where the kids already are, where they're already relaxed, they're hanging out all day, all right? And they're open, they're having fun, they want to explore and try something new. And I will cart in buckets of duct tape and, you know, some pool noodles and some knives and show them how to cut them up and make rubber duckies that they can bring into the pool. We make sailboats, we make submarines, we make giant bubbles. Um, and every week, they sit and when they see me walk in with my big box of stuff, they know something cool is going to happen. All right? So you've already got them there. They're already engaged. They already want to learn. It takes so little to just put something in front of them that lets them go through those iterations, that lets them develop that maker mindset, that maybe lets them explore a STEAM concept. Okay? Get a little technology and engineering, but really make it artistic and fun. Okay? Um, I, uh, the other thing I love to do, I go to farmer's markets um, two, three times a month, um, sometimes more. Great place. Mom and dad want to get their shopping done. Guess what? The kids are bored. They are, do not care about arugula. Okay? That is a wonderful opportunity to take kids that would otherwise be wandering around driving their parents crazy and bring out the snap circuits and teach them how electricity works. Okay? I have done 3D printing in the rain at a farmer's market. That's Maker Camp. Okay? That's Maker Camp. So, break out of the box. If it's somewhere that you love to be anyway, and if you know there are kids there that might be looking for a great experience, make that your Maker Camp. Um, I did, this was a new experience for me. Um, one of the local churches um, this year reached out to me and they wanted to do a Maker program from their perspective, right, um, for a vacation Bible school. And they said, but, but we feel like it needs to be more. We know that you know this stuff. Like, you know this stuff. So they invited me to come in and put together a maker camp in the church. And we did. And I'm going to tell you, it was amazing. It was absolutely phenomenal. I got to interact with a whole new group of kids that I may not have otherwise seen on a regular basis. Um, we got to talk about things um, that maybe they've never talked about in vacation Bible school before. Okay? And, um, and it was just a really wonderful time to share with them things like how do you make an LED throwing and bring it into a context that, that is really rich and really deep for them. So that said, um, don't think that you have to have a fancy maker space. A rolling toolbox and some duct tape can be a maker camp. It's all about your imagination making it one. So that said, anybody got some ideas of cool places that they could host a maker camp? Any ideas churning? You were saying you do YouTube videos, right? Yeah. Did you ever think of doing an online YouTube maker camp? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> right? Just broadcast it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that'd be awesome. I'd tune in. And I bet a lot of kids in that, that tween, teen age would too. Because they love YouTube. Anything on YouTube is automatically cooler than anything their mom or their teacher says. Automatically. Twitch is where it's at. <laughs> oh, I'm already behind the times. I'm too there old. There you go. You gotta move to Twitch. <laughs> See, they haven't told me that, so that means they're trying to, they don't want me to get to the cool stuff. Well, as soon as you're there, it's not cool anymore. But that's, maybe I shouldn't check it out. Then. I'll just stay, I'll stick with you. Don't tell them that you're there. <laughs> but, you know, think about using that kind of a medium and, and making it your own, and then, or using Google Hangouts and making it an interactive experience where kids can be talking to you about what they're making as you're making. Okay? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, something. Yeah, what do you got? I feel like we're using the same playbook because these are all the same types of things that I've been doing over the last six years and can't get out all into the community. When I started, if you're working in a school as an educator, I had to look and find ways because you couldn't, it was hard at that time to get people to do it in the classroom. I went into the lunchroom and I took snap circuits in the lunchroom and I carried it around and I had the little flying saucer snaps, just something really simple. And I'd do it to a table and all the other kids would be watching and they'd see it fly off. Next day, all the kids wanted it. Yeah. So next thing you know, you're going around to all of them, and then we're bringing more. Then I had parents coming in and helping out, and they'd never seen snap circuits, and we showed them real quick. They'd take it around and do it at the lunchroom. <laughs> so it's just kind of finding those places, those little niches yeah. where the kids are, and bringing it with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. You do 4-H? Yes. So yeah, you totally know this, this space. You know how this, this works. And you know, that brings up a really good point. You don't have to go it alone either. If you're if you're thinking this might be too much for me, 
find your local 4-H, okay? Find a librarian who's into it and partner up, okay? Don't try and kill yourself to do everything yourself. You don't have to. This is about community. And again, you're modeling to the kids then what it means to be working as a team to make something new, all right? Um, all right, so passion. This is so important, so very important. You should not be doing Maker Camp projects that don't speak to you. If you aren't excited about the project, I guarantee those kids are not gonna give a care in the world <laughs> about that project. They will not be engaged. You have to be engaged. You have to. And it's okay to pick projects that you are curious about. It's okay to pick projects that you want to challenge yourself with. This year in our affiliate pack, two micro bits showed up, and I'd read some articles about it, but I had never used one before. Well, you better believe I checked that sucker out and I found a way to make it part of Maker Camp because I was curious how it worked. And because I was curious, and because I was excited, and because I had no idea how the thing worked, the kids were engaged with it because they were going to show me how it worked. They were going to figure it out before I did. They were going to make something cooler than I could possibly come up with. All right? So, you know, passion, right? How many of you went to some kind of a day camp, summer camp when you were a kid? Most of us, right? How many of us loved their day camp or maker camp as a kid? Awesome. So what, what about it did you love? Woodshop, arts and crafts, baking. So I mean, if you, if you love woodshop, right? There's no reason you can't plan your maker camp around woodworking, okay? It doesn't have to be all things to all people. It has to be unique and special, like you. You must be its heart and soul every single day. And the only way to do that, the only way to give that kind of energy is to truly love what you're doing with the kids. For me, that's t-shirts. I have such vivid, vivid memories of day camp as a kid, and the first time I was shown how to screen print a t-shirt that I got to design and draw that paint across the screen. It was such, such just, just the smell, the paint, everything. And I was definitely the nerdy, sciencey kid, and this was the first craft that I was like, wait a second, I like this. I actually like this. Which means every year for Maker Camp, I have to come up with a newer, better, cooler t-shirt to do with the kids. So my first Maker Camp, I screen printed and failed horribly. Perseverance, okay? Failed horribly. I messed up. I overexposed the first one, and then we couldn't get the ink through it, and our design was messed up. I didn't make sure it was a good stencil. It was a bit of a nightmare. We ended up just taking out fabric markers and going crazy on the shirts, and uh, you know, just going totally freeform. Um, but you know what, the next year, I planned another really cool t-shirt that I wasn't sure was gonna work, and it did work. It worked great, and the kids loved it. And then a couple years later, I decided, okay, I'm gonna try the screen printing thing again. I'm gonna be fearless, but I wasn't just gonna do screen printing because I already failed at that, so you know, I gotta take it up a notch. I decided to do color changing screen printing. So, I did some research and I found some cool dyes and pigments that I could actually make color changing, that is not me, um, color changing screen prints with the kids. And you know what, it worked like a charm. It worked out great. They had fun, I had fun, and I felt redeemed. I felt redeemed, and so, guess what my Maker Fair project was that year? I came, and instead of just doing it with, you know, 20 kids at a time, no, I had to do it with hundreds of kids in a day or two. And we did, and we were covered in paint for days, color-changing paint. Um, <laughs> going to work on Monday it was just really fun when you have color-changing purple paint on your fingernails. But um, perseverance is so important. The woman who was here, Amber, just before, she was talking about the failures, right? And it is so important to both model dealing with failure to the kids, and that's why you have to challenge yourself, so that you risk failing in front of them. It's scary, but you got to do it, okay? Because that's the only way you achieve greatness. That's the only way you show them how to achieve greatness. And you have to work with them through their failures, because they will fail, epically. <laughs> and there's a fear sometimes, because it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be summer camp, right? They're not supposed to be upset when they go home that something didn't work. But they need to wrestle with that. And it's nice to wrestle with that when there's no grade on the line. You know? They're not going to worry about getting a bad assessment. 
They're not worried about mom being mad because their t-shirt didn't work out. I mean, really, it's a t-shirt. Um, so that's a really great lesson for the kids, to have that freedom to fail. Um, who's got a failure they want to share? Come on. Anybody? All right. I love you. I love you, too. Um, I actually did t-shirts and it was a failure, but before that I've been failing for years. Um, and I did a unit, I was a computer teacher and we did a unit on font design. And the, the kids made amazing fonts, but to make them into actual computer fonts required vector alignment that was so complicated and hard that I told my kids, we're moving on, we're not going to do this. And they were like, okay. And it was like, oh, so it's for me, it's okay. It was fabulous. It was very free. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, don't be afraid to fail. And, I mean, that really does go for you, too. But you have to challenge yourself. And if you do fail, just model the great behavior that we as makers with the maker mindset have already. You get back up, you try something new, you keep going. Because that is the most important thing so kids can take away from any program you do. Who's got the musical accompaniment? One dance. All right. Keep it campy. All right. There is this desire for everything these days to be STEM and to be important and to be education. And that's very nice. I mean, I like to keep my kids challenged in engineering and we talk about their standards and all that stuff. But this is camp. This is summer. Don't ruin a kid's summer. It is not school. Okay? It's not a classroom. Okay? Because Maker Camp is more than just what they're learning. Okay? It's about the peers that they're learning with. It's about the social skills they're developing. It's about the chance for reflection. It's about the chance for fun. You know, so take, you know, your catapult project and go outside and wing the marshmallows at the squirrels. It's fun. The squirrels enjoy it. Um, maybe the marshmallows aren't healthy for them, but it's fun. Um, you know, take time to make up your make your camp song for the year. You know, get crazy with it. But remember that the basis should always be the fun. Okay? Get in touch with that inner camp counselor. And if you have trouble doing that, I know I do sometimes as an educator. It's very hard to get out of class mode, which is part of why I love doing Maker Camp, because it gives me a chance to do it. If you're not good at that, find somebody who is. Partner up. Bring them in. I like to hire teenagers. My daughter this year was one of my camp counselors. And I'm telling you, they were so into the projects, it kept me going. And when I found myself getting frustrated or like saying, well, no, let's, just, let's just keep working on this, this project, they were like, no, mom, I think, you know, let's go outside for a while, let's take a break, let's run around. That's important. That's, play is important and it should be part of your camp. Okay, because it frees kids up, it keeps their minds going, it makes it fun. Fun, fun, fun. Um, all right, this one's really big to me, and I feel like a lot of us, um, especially in the maker care community, some of us do a lot of it, and some of us do none. And it's probably the most important thing to keep maker camp growing, and keep maker camp strong, and keep it improving. And that is that we communicate. We're always telling the kids, right? to document and to share what they're making and to reflect on what they're doing. But how often do we give ourselves the time to do that? How often do we really get to like show off our Instagram feed of all the cool stuff we did this week, Mom? You know, like I, I have been known to call my mother and my dad and say, oh my gosh, you'll never believe what we did this year. Um, that communication aspect is so important. And it can be as simple as sharing a, a photo on Instagram, sharing a little video of something. Make sure you have permission, check your you know, liability waivers and photo waivers and all that kind of good stuff. All right? Get your paperwork in order. But share that stuff. Um, and beyond that, share your ideas. Share your questions. Because sometimes a good question can generate amazing responses. This year, we were trying to come up with a embroidered, this was another failure actually. Um, <laughs> we wanted to teach the kids digital embroidery. So we got the machine and we're playing with it. And guess what? It's really hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I was like, okay, maybe maybe I can find out a way to, to make this easier. So I put out there into some of the channels, the Google community page and the mobilized page that they have for, fit, for affiliates. Hey, does anybody have a digital file of little Mr. Makey I can use for Maker Camp? Anything. And everybody's like, no, that's a great idea. Let us know when you got it. <laughs> and we made it. And we did. <laughs> 
very motivating. Very motivating. Um, but those kind of questions can spur all kinds of other ideas because other makers did go, hey, I could do that. That'd be really cool. Or, you know what, why don't I hand stitch it? Why don't I have the kids make a cross stitch? You know, there's one good question can start a million other great questions. Um, share your projects. I mean, it's not that hard to have a Tumblr or a WordPress blog or something. It doesn't take that much time. No one's expecting you to be the best writer in the world or to be the most amazing photographer in the world. We have to stop that, okay? Can we just stop that? Please? I mean, some of you that are really good at it, great. But man, it gives me anxiety to share a project. Okay? I am not a good photographer. Everything happens on my cell phone with an Instagram filter. That's what I got. That's my skill set. All right? So if it gives you great pleasure to create blog posts that are gorgeous and beautiful photography that's perfectly cropped, do it. If it doesn't, still blog. Still get it out there. Still share your projects with your crappy photos. It doesn't matter. It's about the idea and about communicating them. And again, it teaches the kids imperfection. Imperfection is okay as you're iterating, as you're going through, as you're getting better at a skill. Because my blog is much better now than it was when I started. Okay? Um, ask for advice. There are a lot of great makers out there and great maker campers out there that have been doing this. And they are thrilled to be able to offer some advice. For those of you considering, I'm going to give you the one piece of advice that's asked for every year. And that is, when am I going to get my, my affiliate kit? When are they going to put out the Maker Camp projects? The answer is, I don't know, like two weeks before Maker Camp starts. Don't wait for the kit. <laughs> don't wait for the projects. Do what you want to do. Plan what you love. Plan it today. And then if you can add in some of the stuff that they got, great. Do it. Add it. Throw it in. Wrangler. All right. Um, go ahead and do it. Take a name And if you're modeling this race... Now I totally forgot what I was saying. He's gonna help me out. What was I saying? The final answer of the day. Don't wait for the affiliate kit. All right, don't wait for the affiliate kit. Okay, don't wait for the. Don't wait for. I know it is awesome, but the thing is, if you wait and you try to budget after the projects come out, you're not gonna be getting started until next year. So keep the information. Throw it in there if you can. Use it and make your club that you do in the fall. Use it in your classroom. That gives you a whole year to practice the projects, okay? But don't feel like you have to use their ideas. Do what you want to do. Um, and so that's pretty much. Hey, look at that 4.5. Um, so that's basically what I have to say. All right. Please go out, plan a maker camp. Get in touch with me. There's my email address, Sandy at AdventureScience.com. Tell me what's working. Tell me what isn't. Ask me for help. I've got cards over there. Please grab one. Get in touch. I am everywhere. You will see. You can make your camp. I never shut up on.